What's up guys, I'm Brian Sakawa. Welcome to my kitchen. You're watching He Spoke Style, and today I'm showing you how to make three classic cocktails that are perfect for a New Year's Eve party. So this time of year I always think about classic cocktails because one of the traditions that we have around the house that came from my wife's family is that we like to watch the Thin Man movies. You have everything that is good there with William Paul and Myrna Loy. You have loads of style, you have intrigue, you have humor, and you have lots and lots of cocktails. How many drinks have you had? This will make six martinis. All right. Will you bring me five more martinis? Leo, line them right up here. Yes, ma'am. So that's sort of why I wanted to make this video. Now let's talk about the drinks. First up is the venerable martini. Now there are tons of variables when it comes to making a martini, including the type of gin you choose, the vermouth, and of course, the proportions. Now, all of these things are completely a matter of personal taste, but for this video, obviously, I'm gonna show you what I like best, gin. My favorite gin for my martinis is Bombay Sapphire. For Negronis, different story. I prefer beef eater, but I like my martinis to be on the smoother side. And believe me, I've tried many different kinds of gin. Bombay Sapphire is my absolute favorite gin for a martini. Vermouth. In my martinis, I prefer a French vermouth. Dolan is my choice. Now, proportions. Now, we can have a discussion about this in the comments, but I prefer a two to one gin to vermouth ratio, which is known as a classic dry martini. Modern versions, which are basically a glass full of gin with just the thought of vermouth, not for me. I tried the 50-50 version, which is half gin, half vermouth, because I feel like it's more like they were probably drinking back in the Thin Man time, but for me, it's not balanced enough. The two to one ratio is, in my opinion, what a martini should be. So, all right, let's actually make this drink. First thing you need to do with any cocktail you are making is to chill your glass. You're gonna fill it with ice and add some water. Next, we're gonna build our drink. Two ounces of Bombay Sapphire Gin. One ounce of Dolan Dry Vermouth. Next, we're gonna add some ice and stir for about 30 seconds. Take your julep strainer and strain the drink into your glass. Uh, you can add a garnish if you like. Some people like olives. If I add a garnish, I typically use a lemon peel, but it is perfectly fine if you want to skip the garnish as well. Next up, we have the Rob Roy. A Rob Roy is very similar to a martini, except instead of gin, you're going to use scotch. And instead of dry vermouth, you're gonna use sweet vermouth. Now for the scotch, you do not want to use a single malt. You want to use a blended scotch. My favorite for a Rob Roy is Chivas Vermouth. Again, your choice of vermouth is very important. It's a little pricey, but in this cocktail, there is nothing better than Carpano Antica. I've tried other sweet vermouths, including Martini and Rossi, which isn't bad, but Carpano is vastly superior. Now, another element you need for a Rob Roy is bitters, and not just any bitters, you need orange bitters. The best orange bitters you can get for this cocktail are Reagan's orange bitters. First step is we're going to add two dashes of our bitters. Now, what is a dash of bitters? According to a good bartender friend of mine, a dash of bitters is whatever comes out of the bottle, so don't overthink it. So like our martini, we're going to use two ounces of our base spirit here. That's two ounces of blended scotch. Unlike a martini, you want to favor the Rob Roy a little more towards the spirit side. So instead of one ounce of sweet vermouth, we're going to use three quarters of an ounce. Stir again for about 30 seconds and strain into your chilled cocktail glass. All right, this last cocktail, I'm not sure exactly what you call it. Growing up, my family called it a highball, and since I associate this with Christmas time and the holidays, I have come to call it the taste of Christmas. It's probably the simplest cocktail you'll ever make. Definitely nothing fancy, but that's not the point. All you need is Seagram 7 and ginger ale. I don't even measure this drink. I put a big piece of ice in a glass, pour about this much of Seagram's in, and top it off with some ginger ale and give it a little stir. Cheers. So those are three classic cocktails that I enjoy during the holidays. Leave your favorites in the comments. Let's argue about the perfect gin to vermouth ratio for a martini. Thumbs up if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, have a very happy new year and stay tailored.